under the Google branch of companies, we have a lot of products and services. Google Ads, Google Cloud, Pixel, YouTube, exciting gadgets. So actually, if you look under your chairs, you will find absolutely nothing, I'm afraid. I just wanted you to give a good stretch. Um, when I was 18, which is obviously just yesterday, when I was 18, I, I was very, very adventurous. And I made a crazy decision. So a lot of you think, oh, she's talking about AI. She's going to be building, a, building an app. She built a multi-million dollar app. Unfortunately, to my parents' dismay, no. A lot of my friends were enlisting in the army back at 18 years old in Singapore. So I thought, why not? This is actually um, me in the army. That is me right in the front, smiling very, very inappropriately because we, dug, we just dug trenches for an imaginary war that we just created in the jungles. So at 18 years old, I think I made the decision because I was young, I was rebellious, and most certainly because I was unsure. A few weeks into training, this is how I look like, this is how much I regretted my decision. This is me in the front right there, really, really tired and asking myself why. I think a lot of students right here are like me in the picture. We are all very unsure of what we're going to do in the future, what we want to study, especially in the face of AI, especially how AI is changing so rapidly. Now, I teach Sunday school on the weekends, and in preparation for this talk, I asked my kids, what do you guys think is AI? And they told me, AI are humanoids. They are robots out to get the world, just like this one. And I know a lot of you have this misconception that this is actually AI. Now, when we look at a humanoid and we get this unsettling feeling, that is termed the uncanny valley. Um, we get this feeling of getting, being very disturbed because a robot is supposedly having human emotions, the ability to analyze things. Now, this is AI, but what actually is AI? Now, this is AI. <gasps> did I forget a picture? No, I did not. AI, like our favorite Dolby surround sound when we visit our movies, AI is omnipresent, AI is everywhere, and AI is intangible. Now, what does that mean? Now, AI is running on all these things stored in the cold room. It's a well-temperature room, we have computing power, and we can think of AI as machines that are given the ability to think like us, and they run on these things. I know a lot of you are very familiar with this. I'm not sure what you use this for to write your essays, do your homework, but um, this took the world by storm recently. These are conversational chatbots. So conversational chatbots and the rise of it has given the world of problem solving a new meaning. Now, when we think about AI, we now think about personalization being key. Because in the world of over-information, you go onto Google, you go onto Facebook, there's so much information, especially in the pandemic when we saw that, we don't know what to believe. And when we build AI tools here in Big Tech, we also think about how we're going to personalize this content for our audience. How we're going to think about creating and connecting people together. For example, sometimes I go home and in my free time, I sometimes like to browse Netflix. But when I go onto Netflix, I don't know what to watch. I go into action, I've watched all of it a million times and I'm not sure. And then I get this choice paralysis, I get frustrated. Now, AI can help you solve this problem. When we think about personal chatbots, when you ask your AI, I want to watch this sort of thing, I'm feeling this today. And they are like, I can give you some recommendations right now. This is how we can use AI as a tool. But this kind of AI is very, very new um, in our sphere. This kind of AI has a new name and it is called generative AI. Generative AI is a term where it's a type of AI that helps you create content, speeches, beautiful images, and it helps enhance productivity, collaboration, and also creativity. For example, now if I want to build an app, I don't even have to know how to write a single line of code. If I want a panda riding on a green motorcycle for some reason at sunset, I can ask my AI to do it, and they can give me all these images. Now, last time in my school, which is of course olden days, I used to need to write essays, um, email essays for my teachers, and they used to grade them. Now, I don't need to do that. 
I can ask my AI, hey, help me write something. Give me an executive briefing. In your workplaces now in the future, you can now expect AI to be as a tool, as your friend. And if you know how to use it effectively, it can help you save a lot of time and focus on the things that really, really matter. Another thing that we see here is AI is infiltrating, infiltrating into, into aspects such as healthcare. You know, after COVID, doctors find it hard to connect with patients. If I want to go onto an application and ask, what, you know, I have a stress fracture, I need some medications, I need some, I need some medications. AI can help you do just that. And beyond this, other than consolidating information, it can now also give you recommendations on which are the best doctors to find. So when, when you tell them, hey, you know, I had a stress fracture, these are my symptoms, they actually can draw from Google Maps what kind of doctors they think are suitable for your symptoms, how far is it to get there, et cetera, et cetera. As we start to look at these AI applications upcoming. We look at social media applications, we look at the world around us. I think it's very important for us to think critically. When we think about AI, we also have to think about experiences with AI. What are we using these AI tools for? What are we trying to achieve? And it's important to see how we respond to these AIs emotionally and mentally. Just now, I showed you some examples um, of large language models where you get, you put in a text and you get a response from it. Now, in, in school, uh, when I was studying to my parents, Asian parents this May, I chose communications over computer science. Um, and my dad asked me, why? Why communication, not computer science? So in school, after being communications for a while, I decided to learn R. Python, and I came across this thing called prompt engineering. I found pretty interesting. So prompt engineering is a type of way where you ask a question and you teach a machine learning how to give you a certain output. For example, you can teach a machine learning direct prompting. I want, you know, I'll be staying in London for a couple of days. I love curry, I hate fish, and no, I'll be broke by the end of my itinerary because I'll be traveling so much. Could you plan me something? Now, the second way is prompting with examples. I want an answer that looks like this in this format. Could you give it to me? Third one, I give my machine a problem to solve, much like a math problem. What is three fish plus two fish equals five fish? Now, the reason I'm bringing this up because I realize at the point after learning R, Python, coding, machine learning, it is not about whether you know how to code, but coding and engineering is a way of thinking. It is when you teach machine learnings how to think better, you yourself in the process learn how to think better. You know, my experiences in big tech, um, when I stepped into it, I asked myself, okay, now I know all these things. Where am I going to, what am I going to do next? Um, where am I going? In these companies that I've been in, one has taught me that when you build AI and when you look at building applications, sometimes social media applications that were initially built by 15 engineers from Silicon Valley or from the US might not be the most inclusive for everyone. We need to think critically about the social impact that we're bringing when we're building out technologies. We need to think about inclusivity. My thinking doesn't equate to everyone's schools of thought. How am I going to be more inclusive when building up platforms such that everyone globally will enjoy? Another company has taught me that technology has far-reaching implications. More so, you know, a lot of things that we take for granted here are life-changing for people everywhere else. I travel quite a bit, and whenever I travel, I try to visit an orphanage at the city where I'm at. The last orphanages I visited were in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. Um, and these boys, they were actually in a boy's home where their parents had been victims of drug abuse. They had been abandoned. Um, 20 plus of them living in an orphanage. They have very limited access to technology. Um, they don't even, they're not even educated uh, in English. So they have one hour of screen time from 7 to 8 p.m. every single day. Um, most boys, they choose to play games, of course, as they are. Um, but there was this one boy that I came across. Um, he was 22 years old, and he has been at the boy's home for over 20 years. 
He told me that recently he was browsing this social media application on his phone called Xiao Hongshu. Um, it's you know it's created out of China. A lot of these boys they don't further their education um, in universities because of their lack of the English proficiency. They don't dare to dream. But this boy, he has been browsing social media for such time, and he keep he kept coming across all these videos of people cooking. Of people in fashion, and he told me he was inspired, and he loves cooking, he loves fashion, and because of the exposure to social media, and because of the exposure to all this content, he now has the courage to dream. He now has the courage to dream beyond what his circumstance has given him. He now has the courage to think about what else he can be beyond his circumstances. Unlike the other boys, this boy has made good use of the technology given to him, and can we imagine? What effects it might bring to the children all around the world if AI and applications were built for good? You know, I'm no tech genius.、Um, I was not the best coder in my class, but I care deeply about the technologies that we create. I care deeply about the applications that we are building for people. I care deeply about the effects of social media, and I would encourage everyone here.、Um, Social media, AI is not just for people in tech. People trying to go into tech, AI is actually for people who care deeply about what is happening to the world around us, care deeply about what how we how we bring how we bring together humanity as a society, how we reach out to someone else from all across the world to understand their predicament, and how we extend our help and resources to them. AI, I think, is a reflection of us. It is a reflection of our desires. It's a reflection of our dreams. Of our hope as humanity, and my question to you is: If you knew that you had a had an army of machines behind you, what would you build? Thank you.